Last time on Shadow Peace, the Winter Solstice Festival Tournament ended abruptly because of the interference from a random giant shouting about the latest newspaper. This was the reason why Sanji froze in shock, which resulted in him not defending himself and getting hit by a monstrous full power punch from Hyrule. Just like Kaido hated the way he won against Kozuki Odin in the past, the Sin of Pride did not want to win in such a dishonorable way either. Only because of his current hearing issues did he pull through with the punch, otherwise he would have stopped himself and resumed once Sanji would have returned to his senses. But in this universe he didn't, with a devastating bone-breaking last attack the Charlotte husband got wrung out and the tournament ended. After a short time of confusion and King Odin recapturing Everyone's attention, Hyrian gets applauded as this year's champion. While the king congratulates our giant juggernaut, he does not care. In fact, he tries to spot where his strike sent the human. Somewhere outside of the arena, a physically and mentally broken Sanji is walking as fast as he can, but that last move broke one of his legs and he can't run properly. The news of his wife getting kidnapped and his family going to war against the Blackbeard pirates made him snap. He is not thinking clearly at this moment. Every time somebody asks him why he only uses his legs in combat, he tells them his hands are only for cooking. But right now he is so desperate and furious that he took them out of his pockets and threw himself on the ground. With a broken leg, walking or running is not the way to go. Instead he starts crawling, like a maniac, pulling himself across the ground with his arms. This is a low point for the cook. To be completely honest, he doesn't even know if he ever felt so much turmoil in his body. Absalom, followed by the other Fullerbark pirates, quickly get over to their ship guest. All their giant acquaintances, Bronya, all the kids, Magnus and even Eric came as well. Having battled once against Sanji, they know that he is a good guy. So not only are they concerned for his health after that last big hit, but they also noticed that something completely unrelated to the tournament happened to the human. The Dark Messiah stands in front of everyone else and stretches out his hand for a student to take. Are you... Okay, boy? His voice is filled with genuine concern. Absalom really grew to care about him. However, his hand gets slapped away, and a death glare gets thrown at him. The injured cook is devastated on so many levels that he is not thinking clearly at the moment. You! You knew about this! You knew about this and didn't tell me! You bastard! You asshole! Just fuck off! Go back and leave me alone! I don't need you! Pure emotions are being shown, and this outburst actually hurts the Dark Messiah. Yes, he did know, but what would the knowledge have changed? Sending Sanji on a mission he's sure not to return from would make him a horrible master. And it's not like the Charlotte family member entered the tournament only for the Fullerbark Pirates. He wanted their favor from Odin as well. The bewilderment of the people that only got to know Sanji on Elbaf is obvious, and the next person to take the stage and explain everything knows the risk, but he doesn't care about anyone's past. Having left his own past behind him, Gekko Moria speaks up. You only know this human is Sanji, but that is not his full name. Perona and Absalom want to interrupt their captain, but keeping the secret won't help anyone either. All of the connections you made and all the emotions you felt they won't be changed because of this, but his full name is Charlotte Sanji. Eric and Bronya react in the expected way, shock, denial and then realization. Why would he react to the news like that if not for being related somehow to that family? They take a few steps backwards, bumping into the quarter giant Magnus. Are you two seriously throwing away a friendship because of a family name? That's completely embarrassing. Not because Magnus is stronger than them. But because of his unfiltered words, they stop and take a look around. The orphan children are too young to know about the feud of Elbaf and the Big Mom family. Some also just ask themselves why Sanji has a girl's name. So they are reacting in the correct way. They care for Sanji, not for his family, but exactly for him. Having come to their senses, they just look at Sanji who is still being stopped by his teacher Absalom. Get out of my way! Waste your time on somebody else! This can't wait any longer! Like being possessed by a demon, the Charlotte husband yells and screams like his life depends on it. His flames already stopped a while ago, but you could say flames of hatred are still burning violently. 
Kids aren't prejudiced, and Sanji was nice to them so far. They even had a lot of fun together, so they care about his well-being and want to console him about his loss. However, the face the human is wearing at this moment is scaring the three to six-year-old giants. The Philabark pirates could easily do something against him, and so could Eric, Magnus and Bronya, but it would not help. It would just hurt the situation even more. Rona was thinking about using her negative hollow to stop Sanji for now, but she doesn't do anything either and just watches how the situation between student and master unfolds. Why are you not saying anything? Huh? Great Dark Messiah? Tell me, why did you not tell me? Absalom has never been in a situation like this before. Not way in the past with his own family or during the time he spent together with the Thrillerbark pirates. I... He stops after just opening his mouth. He doesn't know what to say that would actually help in this situation. In his uneducated opinion, he should just remain standing there and take all of the accusations Sanji is throwing out. A horrible situation for everyone present. Bonk. A certain someone had enough of it and approached the injured human, while all of the other people were emotionally occupied and didn't pay attention. One punch was all it took. The finalist of the tournament is now out cold, and everybody just stared at the person who took the punch. Liv, the young giant girl, is standing with her fist raised over Sanji's head. The adults are shocked by what she just did, and the other kids are still scared by the way Sanji behaved. Ronya rushes over to the girl and wants to start reprimanding her. Liv, you can't just punch somebody injured, he... Twirling her foot on the ground all innocently, she puts on a cute act. Liv is not stupid. Obviously, this is not a nice thing to do, but in her mind, it was the only situation. Well, big bro Sanji scared all of our siblings, so as the leader, I had to do something, right? Scolding her can wait. That is what the Iron Maiden thinks at the moment. First, they need to take care of Sanji. The Chimera human is way ahead of her. With a student thrown over his shoulder, he quietly makes himself on the way to Bronya's home. All of the giants and Frillabark pirates follow him. To unknown citizen of Elbaf, this just looks like a walk of shame after Sanji lost his battle in the tournament, but it is so much more. Nobody talks until they have reached the house and tied up the blonde young man to make sure he won't instantly run away once he wakes up. Brooke is tasked with distracting all of the younglings, and as the entertainer of this pirate crew, he accepts the challenge. Everybody else sits around the dining table and listens to the story Absalom wants to tell. The vice captain has formed the strongest bond out of anyone present with Sanji, so he has the right to explain more details about the cook from the Charlotte family. As Maria already told you, the boy Sanji is part of the Charlotte family, but he was married into it. His original name was Vin Smoke Sanji. Magnus, you might know them better as German Double Six. The traveling giant is shook, so he didn't lie during their battle? That blonde human is the actual stealth black? But what does that mean for the story of Sora Warrior of the Sea? How much of it is true, and how much of it is just a story? After that reveal that only the giant barbarian cares about, the Dark Messiah continues with his story. Well, Sanji had a horrible relationship with his original family. His brothers and his father basically tortured him every day. Only his late mother and his sister, who I don't know the circumstances of, cared for him. A tragic story that opens even the hearts of Eric and Bronya who despise the Charlotte family. And only a few months ago, most of his family got killed by the Big Mom Pirates. You might think that's a bad thing to happen, but Sanji didn't have good connections and memories about them. And then he married a girl from the Charlotte family, marking a completely new start for him. And hopefully a new, better family. The giants are already expecting to what this story will lead to and clench their fists. If what they are thinking is in fact true, Sanji's reaction only makes more sense. The name of that young girl. Absalom takes a deep breath for a dramatic pause, but everyone already guessed it. Her name is Charlotte Pudding. The person you have seen in the newspaper and who got kidnapped by the Blackbeard pirates. That's it. Not caring about their past feelings. Right now they are just experiencing fury for the sake of their human friend. Everything has been revealed and no more secrets are being saved for the future. Now they just have to take care of Sanji and make sure that he recovers to full health. 
After that, the three friends Sanji made are willing to go to war together with him. A big war is going to envelop the entire world in the future. But this is the end of today's episode of Shadow Peace. I hope you enjoyed it. Today we got some sort of emotional moment. I really wish I could voice act it better to bring out all of the emotions Sanji was feeling, because this really is a devastating moment for him. This man is broken. Not only did he have this conflicting situation with Absalom right now, but he knows that Pudding is imprisoned by the Blackbeard Pirates, his family is going to war, and so much more is going on inside of his head. It's just a very complicated situation, and I, as an amateur voice actor, am just not good enough to bring all of these emotions out. But I hope it was still enjoyable for all of you. Now, Elbaf is technically coming to an end. We still have a few more episodes left on the islands, but the future arcs are coming very quickly. But that's all from me for today. All that's left to be said is stay happy, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay cultured. Pyro, out. Bye!